Which one is better? The iPhone 13 Pro or this Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra Android thing? If you're currently using an iPhone and wondering if Android is better than the iPhone, or if moving from iPhone to Android is an upgrade or perhaps a downgrade, then stick about as we continue our pursuit of lifelong iPhone user tries to switch to Android. For those of you new to the channel, my name is Pete and I am a lifelong iPhone user. And not just iPhone, I am most definitely a self-confessed Apple fanboy. But something that has been gracing on me over the years is actually, I'm just getting a little bit tired of the iPhone. Each year it's a small improvement, a slightly different shape, slightly better specs. And as I glance over to these Android phones, you see some really cool innovative features that I just love to see on iPhone. So for the last two weeks, I have fully switched over from my iPhone 13 Pro and my Apple Watch Series 7 to this, the Samsung Galaxy S22 Ultra along with the Galaxy Watch 4. So in this video, I'm gonna run through the things that I like, the things that I don't like, and decide whether I'm gonna keep this phone. Now, if this is something you'd like to see more of, then do consider subscribing to the channel as I'd love to show you more fun escapades of an idiot who doesn't know Android trying Android. So first up, what are the good things about this phone? And in no particular order, let's start off with the keyboard because one of the first things that I noticed when going through all of the setup for this phone is that you have to type in your email address like a bazillion times to sign into everything. Yes, you can install a password manager and shout out to today's sponsor, Roboform, more on them a little later, because that does save you a lot of having to do it manually, but you do still have to type in your email address a bazillion times during the setup. Now on Android phones, as you start typing in your email address, it actually recognizes this and lets you fill in the rest of your email with just one tap. That feature alone saves so much time. Next up, let's talk about how hot this phone gets. Because one thing I haven't experienced since using this phone is any uncomfortable moments where the phone gets too hot to use. Now, it might be too early to tell for sure since it's only springtime here in the UK. And, and by spring, I mean it's about... Um... Hey Siri, what's the temperature outside? It's currently nine degrees. Spring. But even when I did my battery test last week, where I tried my hardest to run down the battery on this phone, which I did manage to do in four or five hours with gaming, the screen was on max brightness, even the torch was switched on at the same time. And even then, the phone was only just lukewarm. So the new tech that Samsung does have on the S22 Ultra, which disperses the heat across the phone, does seem to work really, really well. Which was probably wise for them to come up with something given their um, explosive history. Pun very much intended. <laughs> Now, for me, the S Pen is a bit of a Marmite accessory, I'll be honest. You'll either love it or hardly ever use it. And if you're coming from a previous generation Note, then you're in for a better overall experience with the updated specs with this pen. Now, I didn't personally use it myself. You know, why pull out a pen to tap things on screen when it's quicker to just use your finger? But I do like the pen itself. Even just to hold it and click it is kind of therapeutic. The kids, also big fans of the pen, they absolutely loved drawing on the phone. So it's a good distraction if you need to keep kids quiet for a while. And I do genuinely like the implementation of using the pen as a remote to like snap photos. That I do genuinely see as being useful in some situations. But in terms of general note taking for me, I didn't really use the pen that much. I just find the size of it being more like a, a police notepad for note taking isn't very comfortable for me. And someone who struggles to draw stick people and with handwriting worse than a five-year-old, I'm gonna stick to using the keyboard for now. Now the display on the other hand, is something that I can get behind because the display looks beautiful on this phone. I'm not personally a fan of the curved edges, but damn it is a good screen otherwise. There's a setting that I discovered that can automatically brighten the screen when watching video content to make it look extra punchy, which I have enabled. And video content specifically is a really pleasant experience on the S22 Ultra. Though back to those curved edges, if there's any content displaying around the edge, then the reflections from any light sources in the room could get pretty distracting. But similar to the iPhone range, we've got 120 hertz, which ramps down to as low as one hertz to conserve battery life and the full quad HD resolution, which is rare to actually see both 120 Hertz and quad HD working together. Normally you have to compromise between a low resolution, but higher refresh rate or high resolution and lower refresh rate. The screen is bright when it needs to be. And there's also an extra dim toggle that I came to appreciate at night when looking at the screen in like pitch black rooms. I always find that the iPhone screen could do with just being a touch dimmer when looking at it at night. The adaptive brightness also pretty good. I don't think I've ever had to adjust it regardless of being in either direct sunlight or a dark room. So for me, big thumbs up for the display. Now, next up, I want to talk about one of the biggest and best features of the S22 Ultra that I have to say I've always ignored from it on the Samsung lineup of phones. Kind of thought it was a gimmick, but wow. So the biggest and best feature of Samsung's S22 Ultra for me is the Samsung 
Dex feature. This thing, this phone, can be connected to an external display, keyboard, and mouse, and the whole phone changes into like this mini computer. Like you can genuinely multitask, browse the web, read emails, browse through your photos. It's actually really good to use in that situation of not having access to like a laptop or tablet with you, but you need to then work on a bigger screen with a proper keyboard and mouse. And this is also the same way the Galaxy Tab works. They're a tablet first, then plug them into a display, and the actual operating system changes to more of this desktop operating system. I really wish this was how our Apple's own iPad and iPhone would behave, iOS, when it's used in its regular format. And when connected to an external display, it should switch itself into a full like Mac OS desktop experience. Please, Apple, that, that would just be that would be incredible. Now that's not to say that Dext is perfect. It does have limitations. That is a huge step in the right direction. Cameras are next up and the S22 Ultra has four lenses. You've got the 108 megapixel F1.8 wide angle. You've got a 12 megapixel F2.2 ultra wide and a pair of telephoto lenses. You've got a three times and a 10 times optical zoom. But without going into a full like camera versus camera comparison of this phone, there are some noticeable improvements on the S22 Ultra over my iPhone 13 Pro. Firstly, portrait video is significantly significantly better than Apple cinematic video modes. Just look at how clear this S22 Ultra footage is around the hairline and then compare that to the fuzzy mess that is the iPhone footage. Also to me, the skin tones just look off on the iPhone when comparing them side by side. I think the S22 is sharper. Definitely less um, weird things around the, uh, the hairline. That's actually pretty good, I think. Better than the iPhone. Wow. And then compare this to the iPhone's version, which is cinematic mode on the front facing camera, which you just look around the hairline, it's really fuzzy, blurry. And I would say also the, uh, the skin tones just look very soft, I guess is the word. Definitely looks like there's some, something going on there in terms of processing where it's trying to smooth my skin and just, just doesn't look right. The skin tone itself just looks, looks off to me. So uh, yeah, much preferring the S22 over the iPhone for like the first time in, <laughs> in, in ever. Overall, it's a clear night and day difference when using portrait video mode. Now, admittedly, the Samsung doesn't do the auto shifting focus like Apple does, but the S22 Ultra does have tracking auto focus. And I think the video footage looks vastly better in that particular mode. Now, sticking with video, there's also the auto reframe feature that works in a very similar way to center stage where Apple will pan around to keep you in frame when shooting a video. And on the Samsung, it works relatively well. Like you can catch it out if you move quickly, but overall, very, very good feature. Now you can also shoot 8K video up to 24 frames per second, though other modes are locked at 30 frames per second or higher. When using the portrait mode on the selfie camera, I actually prefer some of the shots that came out of the S22 Ultra over the iPhone, which is a real shock to me. You wouldn't really tell the difference if you didn't have them side by side, but when you look at the details, particularly the separation around the hairline, the S22 Ultra is very, very good at picking out even individual hairs. Very impressive. The addition of the 10 times optical zoom lens with that insane 100 times zoom, it, yes, of course, it's not that clear at 100 times zoom, but it is far clearer than you can get on anything on an iPhone. And you can actually comfortably zoom into maybe 50 to 80 times before the image really starts degrading. And then you start kind of wondering what you're actually pointing it at. But all in all, it's a really, really strong camera configuration that can take really good photos. And I just don't think you're going to be disappointed. Now, this is just a minor thing, but something I have heard a lot of complaints about is that a lot of dust and dirt tends to get stuck around camera lenses and kind of makes your phone look dirty. All I have to say to this is is by the white phone because it's really, really difficult to see the small accumulation of dust and dirt that actually gets stuck in those lenses. And with that said, let's address the elephant in the room. So for those of you who are wondering, when's he gonna talk about iMessage? I don't actually use iMessage as much as I think I do. Now, since switching to Android, I am realizing that it's only really my family who still uses iMessage. Since all of my friend groups are a mixture of both iPhone and Android phones, we tend to already use another messaging app like WhatsApp or Facebook Messenger or Signal. And so for those worried about iMessage, Message, first, I would scroll through your messages and first look at those who are actually using iMessages and getting you know, the blue bubbles and then ask those people if they happen to be on WhatsApp or, or something else because typically they already will be. Now, for those of you who do still need iMessage but want Android, then there is a solution. Unfortunately, it does cost you money, but I recently signed up for a service called Beeper, hashtag not sponsored, which centralizes all of my messages across like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Slack, Discord, LinkedIn, and yes, iMessage. So I can now send and receive messages, iMessages, even though I'm using an Android phone. Now it does cost me $10 a month and there is a long wait list to sign up. But for me, as someone who gets far too many messages across all of my social channels every single day, 
it is well worth it for the time that it saves me to get it on this phone. That is all of the good stuff. And it is a great list with tons of things I do legitimately prefer over the iPhone. But, and the buts are my favorite parts. I like big Time for the not so good things. I'm gonna start off with one of the biggest issues that I've experienced with my phone and one of two issues that will probably be the reason why I don't switch the S22 Ultra this time around. And the first is an ad break. Roboform is a parcel manager and form filler that has been around since 2000. Yes, 2000. It allows you to store, manage, and generate your passwords from across the internet in one central place, so you'll never forget a password again. Plus, it's desktop and mobile friendly. Data is encrypted and decrypted locally, and you can protect access to your most prized possessions by using Roboform's in-application 2FA to make sure you're staying safe. Now, Roboform can also store unlimited items and capture as you go whilst browsing around the internet with features like offline access if you get cut off at any time, extensions for all the major browsers, and the ability to easily import from those same browsers and other password managers. It's a great option. And at the end of the day, if you're not using a password manager, then, well, you should be. So use the link down below and get 30% off of Roboform everywhere, which brings it down to just $16. And get yourself started using a password manager today. So uh, thanks, Roboform, for sponsoring this part of the video. And with that said, let's get back to the video. Getting right back to it, the first thing I want to talk about is the performance. Now, something to note here is that we in the UK get the Exynos CPU and not the Snapdragon chip, which, based on benchmarks, does show the Exynos as slightly better on the multi-core and then slightly worse single-core performance when you compare it to the Snapdragon version. Firstly, that's dumb. No idea why you would put a different chip into a phone depending on where it's sold. It just doesn't make sense to me. But coming from an iPhone and actually even the Google Pixel 6 Pro, it just felt like the whole phone was constantly lagging behind. And I don't think it's a CPU issue. I think it's more an OS issue with the choices they've made for things like the animations. Even with Android, there is a kind of source of hack where you can go into developer settings and speed up the animations. But even with that enabled, it still felt slow. It actually got to a stage where it was such a big difference in performance, as you'll see here here from some direct comparisons with my iPhone that yesterday I factory reset my phone back to defaults to see if that cured my problems and I've also tried toggling the performance options in the phone itself to the highest settings and still it doesn't feel as snappy as other phones including other Android phones. I've also had the odd slowdown when trying to launch the camera and even when taking photos it lags and you can completely forget about trying to snap a number of like quick photos because it misses in my experience about 50% of the shots. Even the simple action of swiping up just seems to stutter or, or just loads up slowly. Now this does sound a bit like a hardware issue. And coincidentally, all of the sponsored Samsung reviews don't mention a single thing about this. But I have seen reports from others online experiencing the exact same problems. So it's not just me having these issues and hopefully it's something that Samsung can fix with a software update because as it stands, this just isn't a usable phone to me. And actually, if you are watching this and have just bought or received an S22 Ultra, I would love to know whether yours performs in the same way as mine does. It doesn't matter if you bought it on launch day or if it's six months down the line. I genuinely like to know, and it would also be a good gauge to see if Samsung are improving things as time goes on with software updates. Now, other not so major and not so good things about this phone are mute. Like, I do wish that all Android phones would have a physical mute toggle switch. I did find myself naturally just turning the volume down with the rocker down the side, only to then be surprised a moment later for the phone to still make a noise. And that is because over in Android land, adjusting the volume on the side of the phone actually only adjusts the volume for media. There are separate controls for the ringtone, notifications and system sounds that you can't control unless you go into the settings for the volume. Now touching briefly on the Galaxy Watch 4 experience here, and whilst the overall experience of using the Galaxy Watch 4 along with the S22 Ultra has been good, you know, it's performed well. I love that you can see the average heart rate when working out, but it just doesn't live up to the Apple Watch experience. Again, I'm gonna go back to my comments about how responsive it is. One specific situation here, but the watch is not good when it's wet. It must be the coating or the shape of the glass itself, but if you ever take your watch into a shower or go swimming, with the Galaxy Watch 4, it's a struggle to do anything. You basically have to dry the screen and dry your fingers before it would work. Now, I don't get that on the Apple Watch. Yes, it's sometimes a pain, but it is noticeably easier to use an Apple Watch whilst it's wet. With that said, over to and back to cameras again. And yes, this features in both good and bad, because whilst the camera is really, really good, it also has some issues that I came across. Now, first of all, that shutter button for me as one, I mentioned it earlier, it's not very responsive. Hopefully it is fixable in a software update. 
still worth mentioning. Also, whilst the overall image quality is good, I do still get some questionable images. Like take these images, for example, taken in portrait mode and regular mode, but there's just no detail or texture to skin tones and there was plenty of light. So I just can't really understand why these didn't come out better. Overall, it is a mixed experience on cameras. Some shots that come out of this phone, I definitely prefer over the iPhone and others just definitely not. Another small detail, which is really frustrating, unless you shoot in 8K, the video features are all locked to either 30 or 60 FPS, which to be honest, for the vast majority of people, probably not an issue. But for someone who shoots all their videos, like the one you're watching now in 24 frames per second, it makes editing footage a little bit difficult. Speaking of which, let me know down in the comments below if you are interested in doing a three-way camera face-off battle between this phone, the Pixel 6 Pro, and the iPhone 13 Pro. Oh, and this is a really random thing to mention here, but this phone is really slippery. Like you will 100% want to get a case for this thing. I don't know whether it's the combination of the shape, the size and weight, but this phone falls out of my pocket all the time. And it happens every single time I get into my car as well. Down the side, really difficult to get to, very annoying. Now the second issue, which I think is also one that's gonna prevent me from picking this up and moving away from my iPhone, is the company's repeat blunders when it comes to, I guess call it ethical marketing. Firstly, and this isn't the Ultra, but the S22 display was supposed to go down as low as 10 hertz, except a few days later, Samsung corrected this to say, actually it's 48 hertz, and then use some excuse of industry standards for calculating this figure. The battery also can charge up to 45 watts, yet the phone actually charges around five minutes faster than when using a 25 watt charger. And the latest that's just come out a few days ago, now the S22, S21, S20 and S10 series of these phones have been completely delisted from Geekbench over investigations showing that Samsung are manipulating the benchmark results by not restricting the benchmarks apps on the phone itself, but instead they restrict the performance of apps like Netflix and even some Google apps, like neither of which are apps that you think would need throttling in the first place. So with all of that said, I think it's kind of fairly obvious to say that as it currently stands, I am not gonna be switching from my iPhone to the S22 Ultra. Again, comment down below with your experience. I'd love to see the comments getting better and better as time goes on, hopefully as Samsung releases updates to fix this phone. But as it currently stands, I would actually pick up the Google Pixel 6 Pro over the S22 Ultra, bugs and all. So thanks for watching. Subscribe for my S22 Plus review coming in a couple of weeks. Now go and check out the battery tests where I compare how fast the S22 Ultra charges or my Pixel 6 Pro.